Hey everyone, Gallifrey for 97 and welcome to today's video where we run down all the Easter eggs, references, continuity stuff that I spotted whilst watching Revolution of the Daleks on a repeat watch. With Captain Jack back, the Daleks, uh, there was loads of in-universe references and all that great stuff. Uh, today I'm going to be running down the ones I spotted. Before I get into this though, let me know in the comment section below which ones you spotted, if I've missed any, and your favourite moments from the special. So without further ado, Let's get started. The episode kicks off with a flashback to the end of Resolution where the Dalek is destroyed. We revisit GCHQ after the Resolution incident. The Dalek is taken on a truck which is being transported to this mysterious place but the driver is sabotaged and poisoned and the truck is taken somewhere else. There's a bit of foreshadowing with the truck as the truck is black with red lining which is the same colour design as the defence drones when they turn evil. Joe Patterson, who's in the running for a new Prime Minister and is in league with Jack Robertson, mentions the toxic waste scandal, referring to rats in the UK, which results in Jack Robertson's political campaign going down the drain. In a demonstration what the defence drones can do, the gun is hilariously used as like a water cannon and the claw accessory is used as a gas blaster. And this is a possible reference to the 60s movie Daleks, which in both films are used uh, exterminator ray as gas blasters. The space jail the Doctor is kept in sees a galore of aliens and monsters. The Doctor interacts with a weeping angel, which she nicknames Angela. Anud and Sycorax, which she nicknames Bonnie and Clyde to antagonise them. The Bating and a silence. When the Doctor's in jail on her own, she starts telling herself a story. And we know this is the first Harry Potter book as she refers to Pivot Drive. The Nox on the other side of the prison cell, which we learn is Captain Jack, goes in tone with the heartbeat of a Time Lord with the Knock of Four. When Ryan and Graham go to enter the TARDIS disguised as a house, you can hear the classic TARDIS style door opening. This is the TARDIS that the fam was sent back in by the Doctor to escape the destruction of Gallifrey. And for the last 10 months, Yaz has been using this as a base to find out what happened to the Doctor and how to get her back. Graham mentions how useful it would be to use a psychic paper. Then this is setting up the ending where the Doctor gives both Ryan and Graham one after they decide to depart from travelling in the TARDIS. There's a call back to Utopia when the 13th Doctor says to Jack, have you had work done? And Jack replies saying, you can talk, referring to the new regeneration. And it's the exact same two lines that were used in Utopia when the 10th Doctor and Jack meet. Jack mentions he's committed multiple crimes to get into the next cell that the Doctor was in. And we saw this in Future of Jadoon, where he was running away from an escape in a stolen ship. Leo, the scientist, is used as a clone recon Dalek host as a puppet. This was a new feature that was seen in Resolution and it continues in here. The Doctor gives Jack a gold star for breaking out of prison. The Doctor has done this in the past with Ryan in Demons of the Punjab. Jack brings up the Siberium and the Lone Cyberman, referring to the Series 12 finale. When Jack and Graham see each other again after Fugitive, he says, hey, Silver Fox, with Jack winking at Graham and Graham looking uneasy. And this is referring to when Jack thought that the Graham was a Doctor giving him a big kiss and a hug. The facility where they're growing the new Dalek mutants, the clone ones, has green lighting, and this could be a subtle reference to Genesis of the Daleks, where the lighting where the Dalek mutants are held in that story was green. When explaining his immortality, Jack refers to when the Daleks killed him in Parting of the Ways, then going on to say the Doctor and past companion Rose Tyler was a part of him being immortal. And he goes and say how she's now trapped in a parallel earth. This isn't just fan service though, this does set up the solution to the ending with the Doctor sending the Daleks in the TARDIS to the Void. When speaking to Yaz, Jack mentions his planet and centuries from. And with Yaz expressing to Jack how she felt when the Doctor left on Earth, Jack refers to the end of time part two when he last saw the Doctor, where the tenth Doctor meets him at the bar, sets him up with Alonzo, and kind of says a formal goodbye, expressing how he didn't know what happened to the Doctor after that point. The sonic blaster is used to break into the Japan facility and against the Dalek mutants who attack Jack and Yaz. When Ryan puts on his grey beanie in the TARDIS before the Doctor and him have a conversation, the Doctor refers to the yellow beanie which was seen in the Series 11 finale. Ryan mentions his dad, which we saw in Resolution, and refers to them as getting on better after them kind of reconnecting in Resolution, the previous New Year's Day special. As the fam didn't know what happened to the Doctor, the Doctor kind of recaps the events of the Timeless Children, explain what happened to Gallifrey and how it was destroyed and how Koshamus 
destroyed it instead of her. When Ryan is trying to help the Doctor and reminds her that it doesn't matter about the past and but who she is now, this echoes the scene they had in the Futures of Jadoon when she first met the Fugitive Doctor and she was really shaken and the fam supported her. Ultraviolet light is used to awaken the new Daleks and this happened in Resolution when the Reconnaissance Dalek was split up and the Ultraviolet light reconnected it and reformed it. When the Defence Drones turn evil with the mutants now inside, they change from blue to red with the extermination effect also being red. And this is, I guess, to differentiate it from the Bronze Daleks, but also a nice classic touch with the voices and the extermination sound design being from remembrance of the Daleks. The new Death Squad Daleks, the bronze ones, have had the plunger taken out and now have claw arms, which is the same as the recon Dalek, replacing the plunger. When defence drone Daleks attack, this is homaging the Battle of Canary Wharf, and then when we see the Death Squad Dalek hovering over the city, this is homage to the Stolen Earth. When the Death Squad Daleks take on the Impure Daleks, this homage is remembrance of the Daleks with the two Dalek fractions in that story, the Renegade Daleks and the Imperial Daleks who are loyal to Davros uh, fighting it out. When Jack Robinson approaches the Death Squad Daleks, the Daleks ask him if he's a leader of the planet. This could be a reference to the 12th Doctor's World President title uh, he had in his era. When referring to the Cybermen, Graham mentions the Cyber Dudes. This is when he's explaining what they're about to do to the Dalek ship, as it's the same that they did to the Cyberman ship on Gallifrey. When the cloned recon Dalek is the last of the Daleks, he beams up to the Death Squadron ship, but the Death Squadron Daleks having none of it and exterminate him. This is referring to multiple Dalek stories where if it's kind of a differentiation of the original Daleks, they're not having it. For example, with the Cult of Scaro, when Dalek Zek became half human, half Dalek, they portrayed him and also with the Paradigm Daleks in Victor the Daleks. The Paradigm Daleks saw themselves as superior to the Bronze Daleks and they were exterminated. The Doctor lures the Daleks into a fake trap with all the Daleks flying into the TARDIS. But this is the TARDIS that was seen in the Timeless Children and brought the fam back to Earth. The Doctor cleverly inverts the TARDIS and sends the Daleks into the Void to be destroyed. The 10th Doctor sent the Daleks and Cybermen into the Void at the end of Doomsday. Maybe Jack reminding the Doctor about Rose gave the idea to get rid of the Daleks. A nice little touch is when the TARDIS is crushed in on itself, it's the same style as when the Void closed, where it's kind of like a paper crushing style effect. When Jack says goodbye to the Doctor over the phone, he name drops Gwen Cooper, saying he's now catching up with her on Earth. He also refers to how she got on with the Dalek invasion, saying that she took out a Dalek with her kid, a motorcycle and a boxing glove. Graham and Ryan's exit is very different to the ones we've had in the recent years, but goes back to how Martha left in the last of the Time Lords, taking their own decision to leave and saying enough is enough. Graham refers to the ending of Ratners in the UK, where the Doctor told them that they wouldn't come back the same people, and he refers that and says that is true. And before he leaves the TARDIS, there's a nice little correction of the line, uh, where he says that Art is in Sheffield. This shows how far he's come since his first appearance, when he first met the Doctor and the woman who fell to Earth, saying there are no aliens in Sheffield. Final scene with Graham and Ryan echoes back to the first scene in the show, on the Sheffield scenery, with Graham trying to get Ryan to ride his bike. They are wearing the exact same clothes and it just shows how they've come kind of full circle and how they've changed as people. Ryan name drops a load of different creatures and monsters that he's faced off with his mates including the giant spiders from Ratners in the UK, a sentient universe from It Takes You Away, Cybermen from the series 12 finale trilogy, the Skifra from Nikola Tessa's Night of Terror, Morax from The Witchfinders and the Mighty Pating, as he nicknames it, uh, from the Sananga Conundrum. And finally, we get Obi Wan style Grace cameo, where she's seen in the sunlight by Ryan and Graham before they're about to go on another bike ride. Grace is where Graham would have been in the very first scene. This shows how much they've kind of bonded together, Ryan and Graham, and how he's kind of took Grace's place in a way, showing that she'll never be forgotten and probably still looking over them wherever she is now. And there you have it, that's my list of uh, stuff I spotted. Did you spot anything that I missed? Let me know in the comment section below. Just a quick update as well, I did record my live reaction to the episode. Uh, it is coming, it is edited, but I just got to go through some copyright stuff through the YouTube system. I also want to do a load of trailers and tributes and 
uh, all other bits and bobs uh, for the special and Series 13 going forward. Uh, but if any video ideas, let me know in the comment section below. And if I do use them, I will give you a shout out uh, in the video uh, that I do. But as always, please comment, like, and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Links and stuff in the description below. But until next time, bye bye.